Omar Khan has struck again. The Pittsburgh Steelers have selected tight end out of the University of Georgia, Darnell Washington with the 93rd overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. We are going to be breaking down this pick and then giving the Steelers an overall grade for their picks on day two in rounds two, well, two and three. Uh, but first here, let's go over how this pick ended up happening. Okay, the Steelers ended up trading down at number 80 overall. This is what kind of what we expected here you take Joey Porter Jr. at pick number 32 then Keanu Benton at number 49 and you know the Steelers really need some more draft capital they only had those two late seventh round picks uh, on day three you kind of want to recoup some of that so Omar Khan trades down here with the Carolina Panthers he gets back pick number 93 and 132 overall in the fourth round and then when the Steelers come on the clock there at number 93 overall the tight end out of the University of Georgia Darnell Washington is there waiting in the wings. Now, Peter Schrager reported uh, from NFL Network that the reason why Washington was falling a little bit is because at the Combine, Washington had some uh, inflammation in his knee that really, really concerned some of these teams and scared them off from taking him earlier on in this draft class. So take a look at his uh, height at 6'6". I mean, Jesus Christ, 264 pounds. This guy is essentially a sixth lineman in there. And we know that Omar Khan, Andy Weidel are, are trying to build this really power blocking, nasty blue collar offensive line, power blocking offensive line for this Steelers run game uh, for Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator next year. Darnell Washington is an absolutely fantastic piece in addition to that. He's going to be a fantastic blocking tight end. He's got some great upside as a receiver as well. He is our uh, number two overall tight end. According to our NFL draft analyst, Tom Downey, you get him here in the third round, late in the third round. I might add. Omar Khan has gotten another gem here in the 2023 NFL Draft. Let's take a look at some of Darnell's stats with the Bulldogs last year. 28 receptions for 454 yards, two tutties, and an average of 16.2 yards per catch. This guy is a very, very good player. Man, this guy, he's got the size. He's got the athleticism. If you really want to put some weight on him, he carries his weight extremely well. You want to put on a good 20, 30 pounds on him, you can put him at right tackle. This guy is one of the best uh, run blockers, period, in this year's NFL draft class, and that includes the offensive tackles. This guy can move people at the line of scrimmage. You add Broderick Jones in the first round that can do that on the left side uh, of the offensive line, then Darnell Wright is going to be that road grading tackle tight end that's going to be able to move edge rushers off the spot for Najee Harris. This is a fantastic move if Darnell Wright can stay healthy. Let's take a look at the Steelers tight end depth chart right now and how he fits here. He re-signed Zach Gentry to a really a, a very small contract there. Kind of a, a kind of, a, you know, it's a very small contract, okay? So they're, they're by no means attached to Zach Gentry as their blocking tight end. You bring in Darnell Wright, who is young, who might be dealing with a little bit of knee issues right now. We'll have to see how, how all all that plays out here in the coming weeks and months. But if this guy pans out, putting this guy next to Pat Fryermuth in those in those two tight end sets, that is going to put the, the the fear of God in opposing defenses, man. These two tight ends are fantastic. Pat Fryermuth is that receiving weapon that you have there and at the tight end position. And Darnell Wright, he right he's, he's going to be right away one of the best uh, run blocking tight ends in the National Football League. And then he's got uh, the the great speed and the, all the things that you look for in a great receiving tight end so over time he can develop into a great receiving threat in his own right I am absolutely in love with this pick here Darnell Darnell Washington is somebody that most people expected to go uh, in the second round if not the early first round this guy's tape is incredible this guy uh, is just a fantastic fantastic prospect and the Steelers get him here in late round three man this is just Omar Khan working his magic again trading down to get Darnell Washington as well just kind of puts the cherry on top of it all. The Steelers now have a fourth round pick uh, 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 going at the, at the top of day three of the 2023 NFL Draft. So let me know what you guys think of this pick in the comment section right now. Give me a grade of this pick of Darnell Washington with the 93rd overall pick. Give me, give me an A, a B, a C, a D, or an F in the comment section. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So whenever you get an, an ad break here on the show, just go ahead, go into the comment section, find that pinned comment, and answer today's question. 
So for me, my grade for Darnell Washington, this pick is going to be an A. Not only do you trade down to get more draft capital, but you get that blocking tight end that this team could really, really use. I mean, the Steelers are really trying to establish that power run game heading into 2023. Najee Harris looked really damn good in this power run scheme at the, towards the end of last season. They've added some really great offensive lineman pieces, both in NFL free agency and in the NFL draft. Darnell Washington is that next piece. I think that this run game for the Steelers is going to be straight up nasty in 2023. Then at pick number 32, so we're, so we're kind of be we're going to be grading each of the picks here, and then going to, we're going to be giving an, a, a grade in totality here for day two. We started off the night by taking Joey Porter Jr., the cornerback out of Penn State. He is coming home. The Steelers have got their future cornerback one. Joey Porter, Joey Porter coming out of uh, Penn State here, Pennsylvania guy, grew up in Pittsburgh, uh, played basketball with Mike Tomlin's kids growing up, has a personal re relationship with Coach T. This couldn't be a better fit, both from the football side and the personal side. This is something that was just destined to happen. This guy was born to be a Pittsburgh Steeler, 6'2 and a half, 193 pounds. Got, uh, he's got extremely long arms, and he's extremely physical in uh, pass defense. I think he's absolutely fantastic at jamming receivers at the line of scrimmage. He's so good, in fact, that sometimes he completely takes receivers out of the play. He's coming in at 23 years old. Uh, he's the number three cornerback on Tom Downey's big board here at Chat Sports, and you're getting him at the top of round two. That is an incredible value for GM Omar Khan. Take a look at his stats from last season with the Nittany Lions. 27 tackles, no interceptions, eight pass deflections, and zero forced fumbles. Now, you might be saying to yourself, what the heck? Why isn't the ball production there? Why doesn't he have more interceptions? Why doesn't he have more pass deflections. They just didn't throw his way. This guy was so dominant that offenses just straight up ignored the side of the field that this guy was playing on. I mean, Joey Porter Jr., the guy coming out of Penn State here, for, he's the son of Steelers legend Joey Porter. I mean, this couldn't be any this couldn't be any better. I mean, and, and from the football side here, you got Patrick Peterson, who's going to be playing kind of a very unique role in Mike Tomlin's defense next year. He's been talking about how he's going to play more nickel. He's going to be playing more safety type stuff. He's going to be kind of that roamer in the middle of the defense to just kind of uh, use his instincts that and f stuff up. And now Joey Porter Jr. can be that enforcer on the outside that can really, really enforce his will there with those long arms. He's a extremely strong. I, I believe he had like six, 17 reps or 15 reps in the bench press. I mean, that is absolutely insane for a cornerback. You are not going to be able to move this guy in the screen game or in the run game. This guy's going to be a great contributor for you in that regard. And, you know, Patrick Peterson, you can move him more in the nickel. You can move him more uh, around the defense. And you still got Akella Witherspoon and Levi Wallace. I think Joey Porter Jr., you're, he, you're bringing him into a situation where he's allowed to grow. He doesn't have all, all the expectations of the world world placed on his shoulders. You have to be our guy from day one. He can come in and be a nice contributor here for the next couple of years until he can, until he's ready to ascend to that number one role. Joey Porter Jr. out of Penn State. This guy is an absolutely fantastic football player. He was my number four cornerback on my big board this year. And the only people that beat him out were, De were Deontay Banks, Christian Gonzalez, and Devin Witherspoon, all of which I consider like blue chip cornerback prospects. This guy's a fantastic fit for the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Mike Tomlin is going to love having him in his defense next to uh, Patrick Peterson. I mean, TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith attacking uh, opposing quarterbacks. This is going to be one fun defense here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now let's get to my grade for this Joey Porter Jr. pick. I'm going to give it an A+. Plus. This is absolutely the best case scenario for Omar Khan here. When he traded up for Broderick Jones on day one, man, you, you, were, you were just praying that somebody like a Joey Porter Jr. would fall to you there at number 32. Thank God he did. The football gods handed the Steelers Joey Porter Jr., and they answered the call. Joey Porter Jr. is on his way to the city of Bridges. All right, so now if you haven't already and you want comprehensive Steelers draft coverage all weekend long, that's what we're going to be providing for you here on Steelers Talk. So make sure you click that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you know when we put out new videos, we're going to be putting out a ton of new videos here over the course of the next couple of days. We're going to have undrafted free agency tracker here on Sunday. We've got a bunch of more stuff coming out here. Day three of the NFL draft is tomorrow. You're not going to want to miss what we have in store here on the channel. So make sure you click that subscribe button for me right now.
Then at pick 49, okay, you take Joey Porter Jr., and then at pick 49, I kind of expected them to trade down, but no, they stay put, and they take Keanu Benton, defensive tackle out of the University of Wisconsin. I really think that this guy can be a, a potential replacement for Cam for Cameron Hayward when eventually he uh, leaves the team, when he leaves football. You know, we know that he's not getting any younger, but, you know, Keanu Benton is the type of guy that's going to be able to come in and be your true one-technique nose tackle, that run stuffer in the middle from day one, and then he's got the physical upside, the long arms, the upper body strength, the athleticism to really blossom into a true pass rushing technician from the three technique. You take a look at what he did with the Badgers last year, 10 tackles for loss. And that's what this guy does. He's got the quicks to, to really blow up uh, opposing run games. That's what he did last season. Four and a half sacks, despite the fact that he doesn't really have much of a plan as a pass rusher at this point in his career. When Moving forward with, with Mike Tomlin, with his staff, I think they can really develop this guy into a true pass rushing threat from the inside of the, in, of the interior of the defensive line. And speaking of the defensive line, you got Cameron Hayward in there. You got Larry Ogunjobi locked up to a three-year contract. So you got, you got three technique and five technique figured out for now. But Cameron Hayward isn't getting any younger, and you need to fill the nose tackle spot. So Omar Khan went out, and he kind of filled both of those needs. You got a guy that can go in there and be that nose tackle for you moving forward right now, and somebody that can transition into that three technique role, that pass rushing interior alignment role that Cameron Hayward currently uh, presides in, and I think I think Keanu Benson has all the tools at his disposal to be that kind of guy for the Steelers in years to come. For me, I'm going to give this one an A-. minus. It's my lowest grade of the night, but it's still pretty damn good, man. Like I, I think that you could have maybe traded down and gotten some more. I'm not Omar Khan. I don't know what was on the table in terms of a trade down in this scenario, but man, Keanu Benson is a really, really good player. He's going to be a contributor right away, and he's got some great upside for you moving into the future. So in totality here, for day two, I'm going to give Omar Khan in the Steelers' front office an A+. I just can't really think of a, of a better scenario for the Steelers to get Joey Porter Jr., a first-round talent that could definitely be a cornerback one, a lockdown press man corner in the NFL with your first pick. Then you get a really, really great talent in Keanu Benson that's going to be a great contributor for you on day one. And then you finish it out by trading down, getting an extra pick, kind of recouping that fourth-round pick you lost when you traded up with the New England Patriots for Broderick Jones. And then you still get Darnell Washington at 93. I mean, that is an incredible haul. That's an incredible night for for the new GM of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He is absolutely killing it. I mean, this guy's just a straight up magician, man. So moving on into day three here, they, they've actually covered a lot of their bases here, right? They still need a coverage linebacker, that much is for sure. And I think that that pick in the round four could definitely be that pick. Uh, but also, they, they could also add a rotational edge rusher. That could be the pick tomorrow. It's going to be interesting to see how it shakes out in day three. But you've taken care of your left tackle spot with Broderick Jones on day one. Then you get your future cornerback one, hopefully, in Joey Porter Jr. Then you get your nose tackle of the future in Keanu Benton. And then you fill your blocking tight end spot and just absolutely steal Darnell Washington in one of the biggest forms of highway robbery you can ever think of. I mean, this guy was absolutely probably going to be high top or high second round pick. And then because of a little bit of inflammation in his knee at the combine, this guy falls all the way to 93 into the Steelers lap. And hopefully, I really, really hope that he proves all those other teams wrong here in the years to come. So let me know in the comments section, which player do you want the Steelers to draft next. The next pick here is in the fourth round for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They have one pick in round four, no picks in rounds five or six, but they do have two at the end there at round seven. So let me know who is that guy in round four that you want to draft to low, that you want to draft tomorrow. Let me know uh, in the comments section. And before I go here, that's going to be it for today's show, but make sure you subscribe to the channel because we're going to be having some really, really great content coming out for you on day three of the NFL draft. You're not going to want to miss it, so make sure you click that subscribe button and turn on your notifications.